Welcome to the production game, your daily instant espresso shot of insight and inspiration. I'm Mike Monday, and today you're going to discover how only a fraction of the results you get from shooting for a goal are what you expect, and why these unexpected results far outweigh the goal itself. So, if you think about um, you on the one hand, and your objective or goal on the other. So you might be stuck or making music relatively slowly, and your objective might be to make lots of music. So you make a decision to do something about it then you take action and then obviously if you make the right decisions and take the right action you achieve the uh, objective of making lots of music but the thing to bear in mind um, and something that I've uh, noticed for the last three years from seeing literally hundreds of people um, achieving their um, objectives and also not achieving their, their objectives is um, something that I actually found it really really um, tricky to um, vocalize until um, a start now finish faster sent me um, an article about the difference between objectives and outcomes and unfortunately I'm afraid I couldn't find the original article but basically in this article he's talking about game theory and how um, the objective is only a very small part of, of what happens when you shoot for an objective. So you take the decision, and the decision itself means that the, the act of making that decision means other outcomes happen as a result of it, which aren't directly linked to the objective. So. Uh, making that decision, you might find that you feel happier. That's that's an outcome. You um, you're not, and uh, as a result of that, you are nicer to your wife or your children or, or whatever. So those those are examples of outcomes which aren't related to the objective. Then you take action, and there are many many outcomes as a result of this action again, which aren't directly related to the objective. So in other words, the act of shooting for the goal creates lots and like millions of other outcomes which you can't predict, but which actually the benefit of which actually outweigh the value of the objective um, because there are so many of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a concrete example from a guy who joined um, Start Now Finish Fast. And you can actually, about eight months ago, I did an interview with him about his experience of the program. His name was Daz, and um, he told me in that interview, and it was, it was quite shocking to me, actually, because I didn't realize he was going to say this. He told me that before he joined the program, he was incredibly um, depressed and would spend um, days on end um, not speaking at all, even though he had, uh, you know, uh, a wife and a, and a kid, um, he was in a really, really bad place. And um, you, you'll have to go and see the video on YouTube to see how the difference uh, it was. Anyway, I got this email from him um, last week about how he's come on. So this is about a year after um, Start Now Finish Fast, so six months since it's ended. And I just wanted to show it to you because it's a really great example of this, um, these, these other outcomes that occur as a result of shooting for a goal. So. Das, hey Mike, me old mate, how the hell are you? <clears throat> you, know, you know, even though I don't really go on SNFF uh, much anymore, I think about you in the course all the time and just draw, wanted to drop um, drop a like to let you know that everything is going so great for me on so many levels, it's actually quite hard for me to believe. In fact, I'm sitting in the town that I mailed, emailed you the first time last year when you posted on uh, Digital DJ Tips. I'm not sure exactly when it was, but it must be very close to a year. And just thinking about how my mindset and headspace was back then is really very frightening. 
Mate, I'm actually doing things now that only a year ago I thought would never be possible in my lifetime. Recently, I teamed up with Hugo Custodio Race, who's a fellow Start Now, Finish Faster, and started working on a silly idea of his, a kind of concept EP with some vocal parts and dialogue that I threw in, and now we have James Unisco working on it with us as well. So James is also a Start Now, Finish Faster. Hugo sent a very rough version of one of the tracks to a label, and I thought nothing of it. I mean, labels never get back to you, right? Not the first time you send one of your tracks to them. Today, we got this. Hey, man, got the tunes. They're sounding great so far. Other email was in the junk folder. Yep, I've now marked this email account as important, so I shouldn't miss any more of, of your emails. The idea behind this is quite massive, definitely interesting, and I'm down with it. So that was the email he got. Uh, and Daz goes on to say, now, it's only early, early days, and I don't really know what to make of what this guy says, but this is great because, one, it means that when a label doesn't get back to you, it could just be that your email has ended up in the junk. And two, it means that anyone, even a 46-year-old drummer that can't really play any other instruments or even consider himself a singer by any stretch, can get label interest on his very first track that gets sent out. And three, this is what happens when Start Now, Finish Fasters get together. Now that James is involved, it's going to get a lot better. Now, this is not just my track. It's a collaboration, but it's a trillion miles away from where I was only a year ago. But it doesn't stop there. On the live front, a year ago, I said I wanted to be able to perform my music live, only I didn't even have any music or any idea of how I was going to do it. I wanted to incorporate my vocals, but never, ever thought I'd be doing it live. The business I started with my wife, Lil Ravers, is going bananas, man. We do these kids' rave parties where we turn up and turn someone's house into a nightclub, and it is fantastic. The music is not dumbed down for kids. It's pretty much what you would expect at an adult dance party. The kids go nuts. I am singing, rapping, and getting these little clubbers to do it with me. Literally, as soon as we finish, we have people booking us straight away for more gigs. And they just keep coming. I am about to start introducing original songs to the set. We are getting merchandise sorted, costumes, and in my reality, I know we are onto something big if I see this through the right way. So apart from Facebook, we haven't even advertised. It's all word of mouth, and people uh, we do the parties for approaching their schools. I'm thinking about getting a booking agent. I just found out today that I may be promoting and playing a Sunday Arvo funk chill session with another mate of mine as well. There are heaps of other things as well, money that has just come from nowhere. But most of all, the confidence I have at the moment is unbelievable. I could go on, but I won't. I feel that the training wheels are off, and I'm on my own actually doing, like I said, things that a year ago I thought were impossible. Rock on. Uh, thanks, bro. Still a long road to go, but I have made some progress. Rock on. Daz. So if you want to see the um, original, um, sorry, I'm just trying to get myself back up. Where's my cursor gone? Yep. So if you want to uh, see the original uh, interview with Daz, it's on my YouTube channel under case studies. I think it's called uh, something to do with time. Um, think you don't have enough time or anything. Anyway, as you um, saw there, his objective when he joined Start Now Finish Fast was just to finish a tune. He hadn't finished a track for two years, so he just wanted to finish some music. But you saw there, there were many different outcomes that has occurred. Uh, we we also already saw in the case study interview that one of the outcomes was uh, as a result of making that decision and taking the action was that he was no longer depressed. He's much happier. Um, some of the other outcomes are he's uh, started collaborating with um, other people who he never knew before. Um, he's uh, started a new, even started a new business, and he's starting to make money from it as well. Whereas before he just had uh, his day job, which is a really, really intense day job, um, putting up solar panels on on roofs um, all over um, Australia, all, all over New South Wales. So. Even though or the, or some of these things are only distantly related to the objective, they have still happened and actually far outweigh the objective. And as he says, there are bound to be many more. I mean, if you take the example of me, um, so there I was playing gigs all over the world and spending a lot of time on planes and in queues and stuff like that. So I used to take magazines with me, uh, like. Um, Sound on Sound, I would read, and also The Economist. And I had subscriptions to these magazines for a while. But I felt that I was maybe I could use my time, this the loads of time that I had on my own while I was waiting for planes and whatever, better. And I made the decision, it was one simple decision, to stop those um, magazines and uh, instead learn about 
my creative process and then take the action and apply it to it. My objective was to make music faster, enjoy the process more, make more of it, and in the end, make better music So that because I was making so much more of it. That was my objective. But what has happened as a result of that is absolutely extraordinary. The outcomes far, far outweigh the objective. In fact, the outcomes have eclipsed the objective. Um, the first thing that happened when I made the decision to um, stop those uh, subscriptions was two of the outcomes I can think of immediately was that because I stopped reading sound on sound, I stopped buying, spending so much money on new equipment. Uh, because often those kind of magazines and the websites like that are also essentially feeders for buying more equipment that you don't necessarily need. Um, and by stopping reading The Economist, which is like a, a newspaper, um, I actually started to feel much happier by not reading how the world is about to end every single week. So those were the initial outcomes, but now the outcome the, the outcomes have completely eclipsed the objective. I created a program showing what I've learned. I've coached all sorts of people like Claude von Stroke and uh, now ha um, helped hundreds of other people. And of course, the outcomes that are even further out are Daz's outcomes too. So I'm not saying this to uh, blow my own trumpet. The reason um, I'm telling you this, the reason I'm trying to um, show you in such clear cut terms how the objective is such a small part of the reason for shooting for the objective is because there are opportunities around you all the time that could do wonderful things for your life and your, your music. And focusing solely on the objective and, it, and just seeing that as being the only thing that import, is important is incredibly short-sighted. I mean, some of these opportunities will work out. Some of them you will hit the objective, some of them you won't, but that's okay because there will be so many other outcomes that will far eclipse the objective and sometimes just get rid of the, you know, the objective will just go away. Like for me, I mean, I don't even make music anymore and that was my um, initial objective. Um, the act of taking these opportunities will yield many, many different outcomes. Um, and the ones you don't expect will always outweigh the ones you do. So. When you next see an opportunity coming your way, take the plunge, even if you are unsure about the precise objective or if you can achieve the objective, because the outcomes will always, always outweigh them. So that's it um, for, tonight, for, for today. Tomorrow I'm doing a special full length, uh, when I say full length, it will be around an hour uh, webinar called Ninja Focus Skills for Music Producers. To um, sign up for that, there'll be a link somewhere on this page. If you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description. Uh, if it's on my blog, uh, it'll be underneath the video. And um, even if you actually miss the webinar, clicking that link will take you to the replay. But you've got to be registered to actually uh, get on the webinar. So click that link whenever you're watching this and wherever you're watching this. And I will see you tomorrow for Ninja Focus Skills for Music Producers. Onwards and upwards and keep writing that music.